Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today's episode is all about the Parabox and how to dupe items with it. Yes, it's intended. So let's just jump right into this. We have to get the Parabox made today, this episode. Last episode, we almost got it. We did a few things like go to a different dimension to get this set up. What I've done is sort of rearranged our lava setup. Now, the dropper setup I know on servers may cause some issues because of this little thing right here. Um, one of them doesn't always update properly and this can cause a little bit of a mess where it just kind of spills more items out than it needs to be. We're going to address this later on. Um, so I had some people that were asking because um, I noticed a lot of people were, were using this setup. Um, we will eventually change this to a way better setup using the auto clicker. Um, an auto clicker is going to be a change from this. This is like super basic early on, right? So you can do this early on. Then once, once you get a, a little ways in, change this because we don't want to keep this going forever. Um, so we may get that to that towards the end of the, today's episode. They do require power, so they aren't as efficient as they, they should be, but they will work. Um, so we, I was doing some testing with the uh, uncrafting, seeing, uh, what things work. Uh, I did update. And today the Ardite sapling and all those still work and function property or properly. So um, this is on the 4.0.3 update. So if you put like an Ardite sapling, you're still going to get back the things that we uh, we actually need. So I need to actually grab a few more of these saplings because I need a bit more of this pristine blaze matter. You can see right here we still get the stuff. Um, so really good. All right. So back to Parabox. All right. Also, you guys responded a gr so, so great to this uh, this Ender Utilities um, handy bag. Um, I do appreciate you guys uh, letting me know that you really you enjoyed me showing you this because I love to do stuff like that. I love to be able to show people things that they may not have known before. So we were working on this, right? We ended up getting all of that enriched alloy that was made in here with some iron. So we should be able to make this no problem, right? So, um, advanced right here, energy cube, good old thing. Um, what you can do is actually throw it over here if you're actually working on something to craft. So you don't have to keep searching it over and over again. That's a handy thing. We need some steel. I believe we haven't made any yet. What you're going to need is some coal for this. And you're going to need some iron as well. And this is a, at least at this stage, um, this is a one to two. So two coal to one iron will equal the right amount of steel. And of course, to get this, we're going to throw it over here. We do need a hopper, some hoppers, good old fashioned hoppers and some chests. Just like so. And we'll get those bad boys in and everything's working perfect. So 32 of those. Technically, we don't have 32 of the coal, uh, which would probably be a good idea to get, actually, now they think about it. Let's go ahead and pull all this out, this out. Let's make sure we have the exact amount. So what we'll do is we'll split this. That'll give us 16. We'll do 32. 16 and 32. Um, the coal actually smelts down really fast into liquefacted coal. Um, so liquefacted coal actually comes from, um, or is actually from thermal foundation, I believe. I believe it's thermal foundation or it's thermal. The other thermal mod, thermal dynamics. No, it's from thermal foundation. Um, so yeah. This right here can actually be used as uh, fuel, I do believe, in the fluid combustion generator, producing about 400 Fe a millibucket, which is quite a lot considering uh, that you can produce this at an incredible rate. So liquefacted coal might be a good power alternative later on down the road once we get maybe some pigs that are really, really producing some coal for us. Right now we do have pigs that are producing coal, but this would be really fast for maybe producing some power. Anyways, this is going to run. This is going to fill up. We do need to get a, uh, a clock on there. I love that I have all these clocks. They're just all over the place at this point. 
There we go. Place the clock there. Um, I'm going to move the furnace. This doesn't need to be here anymore. And then we're going to set our timer back down. Because we, we really need this running and producing once this is full. So that should start to cast. Unless something is broken. Oh, that needs fuel. That makes sense. So there we go. So now it's starting to produce. Which is exactly what we want. So we need some steel. Um, so steel is actually going to be very prevalent. Um, but later on, we're going to have we're going to get to remove all of these processes. We will not need but one casting table, I do believe. Um, and that's just for the occasional things. Um, this will get way, way better very soon. So now that we have that steel right there in our inventory, it is still producing some more. It'll get up to 16. So we, we just have enough right now to make the advanced. And then we get to move on to something else. So, like I said, we have all of this, so we should be able to make four of those in particular. Like four of these guys. We can throw them in here. We need to make the steel casing. And then we can make the basic energy core. And then use the basic energy core with some osmium to make the advanced energy core. Awesome. So, now that we have the advanced energy core, we can take a look and we need to make this... Uh, the Fluix Capacitor. Um, so I recommend, at this point, getting into Nuclear Craft. You're really going to need to get into Nuclear Craft, because there's something called a Manufactory. The Manufactory is going to be able to grind materials down for you. It's going to be very handy. Um, and it's actually pretty quick and doesn't require that much power right, to run. Um, so this thing is very, very handy right here. A handy machine that has many uses. Perfect. So uh, with this machine, we'll probably, I'm probably just going to stack it up here for right now. Uh, we do need to get a GPS. Just like that. Nope, not one of those. <laughs> Keep making those. I need to just make a whole stack of this die because we use so many GPSs. It's kind of, kind of insane. But what, you, what we can do is click that on there over here we're just going to give it some power from one of these right these should be maintaining powers i do have a few upgrades in each one at least for as many upgrades as i was able to make earlier um, before i started the episode um but now that i have that going we can now crush down a few uh, different materials and start using it here you can see we have redstone control and some upgrades these speed upgrades are actually not that bad to make um, let's go into that mod, Nuclear Craft. Actually, we should be able to see them. Speed upgrades, right here. So we have the speed upgrades. I'm going to go ahead and make four of them for right now, just to demonstrate um, how fast this is. So let's get the, the uh, matter overdrive material that we were needing which is this stuff right here, the Thaumium ore that we ended up finding in the uh, Lost Cities dimension. And we'll throw this in here. You can see, look how slow this is at first, right? That's pretty slow. We put these upgrades in, bam, a lot faster. You can see right here that the energy consumption is 20 RF a tick. We put these in, it's 500 RF a tick. We make these energy upgrades right here that help with efficiency, and it is way, way, way better with power. Um, so if you match these, your power is going to be really nice. You can see our power multiplier is tw times 25, um, without those upgrades. But right now I'm not too worried about it, but later on, you're definitely, once you add more speed upgrades, you're going to want to compensate those speed upgrades with your energy upgrades. So this, uh, this titanium dust, we're going to need this. So let's throw that in there. And while we're at it, we also need to make titanium plates. So, tritanium plates can be made by using two tritanium together to make it. Or you can make a forging hammer, which is, in my opinion, it requires two and this takes more time. Or an enrichment chamber is probably the best in which it is one-to-one. -one. Um, you're going to need an enrichment chamber anyway, so I, I recommend getting started with this. You're going to take some redstone and osmium. And I would just grab a stack and just throw it in this. And just let that run, right? You're going to want those upgrades anyways, so you might as well get ready for that. But yeah, you can see it. Nice little fancy particles going on here. 
and we're getting a lot of this stuff. Now, um, what this recommends you do is to melt it down or to use an energized smelter. An energized smelter is probably going to be the bet, your best bet. And that's why I said you need these basic control circuits. Um, and upgrading this thing is really simple. You can get it to a basic tier very quickly. You can get it to an advanced tier very quickly. We can get it to an advanced um, smelting factory pretty quick. And this thing can smelt a lot of stuff very quickly. So we have our basics here. And let's get started with this. So we need to smelt this stuff. Let's go ahead and make ourselves an energized smeltery. So energized smeltery. We also need some steel to make the, the original casing. And there we go, energized smeltery. Now we can upgrade this thing into the basic version with just some more iron. And then upgrade this to the advanced version with these circuits. We need one more. There we go. And then we can go even higher and upgrade this thing. So we'll make two of those, right? Throw that in there. And bam, make ourselves an advanced smelting factory. Now we can't go up any higher because we don't have the materials for it. But this thing is really awesome. Yes, it will smelt this many items at once. It is that crazy. Um, so yet again, we need another GPS. And we're going to give this thing some power. So... Pretty cool, all in all, um, getting started with all this stuff. Um, I do like to kind of separate my power and stuff out. Um, but this should be able to power this machine. We're going to find out. Okay, so it can't. So a way around not being able to power mechanism machines. As of right now, that may change. Um, it may just be a, a bug as of right now. But we can get around that temporarily with using a power cable. So here is the energy power cable. We are going to need some stair bricks, so I'm going to go ahead and make six bricks. Make some brick stairs, and this will get us energy cable. So what we want to do is place the energy cable in the back of this, and it's literally as simple as just hooking the GPS to the power cable. So this is the GPS marker we used. We'll go ahead and link that to the back of that specific cable. And that will be able to provide power to that. And you can add more cables to it. And then this will just carry carry through. Pretty cool. So you can see that this has some power stored in it. Also, this is now receiving some power. So we can give this some Tritanium. Hit this auto sort. It will actually expand this for us. And if we wanted to, we can just put a chest on top. That way we can manage our auto output. Let's talk about how to manage your inventory here. So we have a manufactory pulling, and I can go ahead and have it set to automatically pull the items out. I'm not going to worry about that just yet. You see the input and auto eject? I want to set the auto eject on and put the top to the output. Um, now the input, it could technically pull from here if it was hooked up to another mechanism machine, but it's not, you can see. Um, I don't think this has any other use other than being cooked down, so we definitely want it going in here. And you can see it's going to output the Tritanium up to the top. Very, very useful. Now, I am going to waste some Tritanium, even though this probably isn't the best idea for this. But we need to make some plates. Also, making a cow out of Tritanium, you have to use the block. I recommend making, or not a cow, a pig. I recommend making a pig out of that Tritanium as well. So, let's get into matter overdrive because we need a pair box, right? That's what we're working on this whole time. Getting that pair box finished. And that is going to require a space-time equalizer. The space-time equalizer is going to require a Hinzenberg um, compensator and also the superconductor magnets. Superconductor magnets are super easy. What is going to cost you a little bit is getting this Hinzenberg or Heisenberg um, compensator. You're going to need this isolinear circuit right here. Um, the machine casing, this one's really easy to do. We can go ahead and make that. But we need a special machine for this, which is the modular, or the molecular inscriber, which needs another machine casing. 
Um, so let's see, what item are we missing for that particular thing? A piston. So, we should be able to find that pretty easy over here. There we go. And we can go ahead and make this. Now, I recommend making this wrench. Because we will be needing it later on. Uh, you cannot break these blocks by hand normally without this wrench. You will definitely need that wrench. There we go. And yellow. Perfect. Wrench. Alright, so we can place this down and give it power as well. I'm probably going to just hook it up. By the way, when I said you can't break it, see? Look at this. Very, very slow. Shift right click with a wrench. Bam, you can pop it off. So, I'm going to place it back here for right now. This is building up with some power. Of course, because this is running. Um, we don't need much power for this, but we do need to go ahead and make our um, isolinear circuits. So, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I think we need some just glass, don't we? Let's go check our glass pigs. I think they're on the other side, aren't they? Yeah. Glass pigs are over here. We're going to do the Spider-Man climbing all over our machines. Look at all these glass truffles we got. I love this. So, we can take all these truffles, throw them in there, and get us a bunch of glass. Same. Just like that. Tons and tons of glass. Look at that. Perfect. Alright, back to Matter Overdrive. I think we need three of these in total because one of them is going to get upgraded with gold. So we just need a gold bar. Very simple on how this works. You take the gold bar, place it in here, and then place the um, isolinear circuit in here. And it's just going to take a little bit of time. It's going to produce the other part we're going to need. And man, we are about done with the para box. And we can start getting ourselves some awesome prestige points. So do you need to make another one of these? Machine casings. This is now done, which means we are pretty much ready to go. Let's go ahead and make the um, the, he the Heinzenberg. Okay, it looks like we're missing that one piece. Not too difficult there. Make this, and voila. And then we should be able to make the space-time equalizer. Right. Last but not least, let's go ahead and make the pair box. Oh, it looks like we are missing this, and we're also missing um, purple stained glass. Let's pull all these out. We need purple stained glass in particular. There we go. And some iron blocks. There we go. And that is the para box, right? Guys, we have now a para box. This thing is pretty cool with what it can do. It, for one thing, can get you prestige points, right? It can grant you prestige points. And depending on how much power you put into this thing depends on how many prestige points and how much time you give it, how many prestige points it can grant you. But not only that, it can do other things. It can duplicate items for you. Um, and you, some people may think that that is a bug, but it's not. According to Dark Osto, um, the developer of the pack, it's intended. Um, as far as I know, it is completely intended uh, to be able to duplicate items. That is just part of how the Parabox works. Um, so, with that in mind, let's talk a little bit about how to set it up and how to make sure that you're providing it with enough power, and what exactly this crazy little pair of box that everybody doesn't know how to use works, right? When you click on it, it just has an open interface that says status offline, and then activate. Click to activate the pair of box. This will start generating prestige points and consuming power. So we need a way to send power to this thing, right? For right now, I have four generators that I think might be enough. It may not be. We may need to find other ways to generate power. But all we need to do is fill this thing with 10 million RF. Or, yeah, 10 million RF. 
within 10 minutes, which means we need to produce 1 million RF a minute or slightly more than that. Um, so with that said, let's make four GPSs. We're going to label these each to this pair box. And we're going to hope our lava gin can keep up. Now, I'm pretty sure that it will not be able to keep up due to the cobblestone. So we're going to fix that before we jump into this and start it. We're going to make sure our cobble gin is fully upgraded to be able to handle this. And of course, I made blaze rods for that. This is why we needed all those blaze rods. So let's go ahead and break this underneath. And we're going to now upgrade this with blaze rods. And then we need emeralds. Now this should be able to maintain all of our cobble gins running at full speed. All right, so next, all we have to do now is click that activate button. Now, if you do not get enough power to fill it, it's okay. We're gonna click the activate button. You're gonna see right here, it said, chosen architect has voted to activate the pair box. If you're on a server, you, and you have to get everybody to activate it with you. Um, but if I'm in single player, it says all players have voted. It says right here, a world backup has been initiated, expect lag. This world has been put on a time loop. All progress in the world should be considered temporary until the time loop has closed. With that being said, these things that are generating power do need to be running, right? But if we take a look here, the power right here that we are producing is quite a lot. Um, I do recommend a um, sort of a boost, maybe a battery that has several million RF maybe stored in or a couple batteries that would help out a lot. But we have a 10 minute cycle we have to at least wait for. So at the moment, we should be generating enough power to definitely get us there. Um, I think these buffers are empty. And these power buffers, they're going, they're draining, right? Um, this one still hasn't drained yet. Don't know why, but still has it. Um, but this this is holding a million. So this was a million, a million. That holds a million. I'm pretty sure these hold 64,000 or 640,000. No, it holds 64,000 RF piece. Um, but you can check right here to make sure that you're producing enough. As long as you're generating about a million RF um, within that 10 minute cycle, you should be good. At any time you want to stop this, you can hit deactivate. Clicking the deactivate the pair box will stop generating prestige points and all generated points will be lost, right? Which means your world will not reset, right? So once this time cycle is, if you stop this and deactivate it before and nothing will happen, everything will be fine. If you hit the stop loop right here, it says clicking this button when you are ready to initiate the loop. If you are on a server, all players with boxes must vote for this option. Um, so if you are on a server, like, it's, like I mentioned before, and you have to have everybody to vote for this, um, but like being on a single player world, as soon as you hit this stop loop, after you've gained a prestige point, your world will literally shut down as if you hit your save and quit button. And it's going to revert it back to when we originally hit that activate, it will revert everything except for your inventory, which means you can duplicate items. So once this hits the next cycle, once it hits this full, t this 10 minutes and it has generated enough power, it will start another cycle where it goes to 20 minutes. So you'll have another 10 minutes, but the power that you're going to need to generate is another, uh, you're going to need to generate 10 million on top of that because it's going to require 20 million on top of it. Um, it's going to basically double the power that you're going to need for each point that you do. So I recommend maybe doing this one at a time. Um, you can do it one at a time as long as you're as long as these can keep up with the power consumption of, of the 10 million. Um, once you hit that stop loop and your world restarts, it'll this thing will start back again and you'll have to fill it the same way again to get another point. Um, but like I said, it duplicates items. So once this is done with the 10 minute cycle and we get that done. You can just go around and break all your machines that are very valuable to you if you want to duplicate them. And just keep them in your inventory or keep them in your handy bag. Um, you can pull items out of your system, put them in your bag that you really want to keep, 
it will duplicate them. If you want to duplicate a, a specific mob, just pick it up and have it in your hand. I think you can do that. Or maybe use a mob capture tool and you can duplicate your mobs. It's really un in, like limitless on the amount of duplication stuff you can do. You can pick up all these machines if you want and just duplicate them all. Um, so, cause your inventory is not reset. Um, now the only thing you can't do is pick up your para box. I mean, you, I don't think you need more than those, more than one of those anyways. Um, but by the way, this is the issue that is being generated on the server. We're going to fix that at the end of the episode. I don't want this happening on servers. This is a no, no, this is a no, no. I don't know why it's happening because it should technically stop. Um, but I think it's because both of these need a stopping method. Uh, to uh, activate this. Otherwise, you're going to have that happen. Um, I think my redstone was just a little bit off on this. This design should have been a little bit different. Um, but, I mean, that's just that's just how I go. Um, anyways, like I said, the dupli duplicating items. If I wanted to pull anything out of my system right now, I can do so. And you, n nothing can stop me from doing it. It's it's part apparently a part of the pack. So if I want to pull these uh, overwhelming matter out... I can do that, or if I want to pull the nether stars out, when the world does its backup, our nether stars are still going to be in this system. Pretty crazy. So, I'm going to go ahead and let this go. We literally only need to generate like 1.3 million left, and we still have four, mi four minutes to do it. Um, I think we're good on power. <laughs> I don't think we're going to have to even worry about it. Like This looks like it's doing pretty good. I still don't know why this one's not doing anything. That is being sent to an energy pipe. Oh. Deep mob learning. Where did our other... Pair box, pair box. Oh, that's why. Oh, that might speed things up. There we go. <laughs> so there we go. We hit the 10 million power mark. Um, I put that in the wrong location. But this this is running very good. Um, so once it hits that other thing, it's I'll, I'll be right back once we get past four minutes. I'm sure you don't want to sit here and do nothing for four minutes. Um, and then we'll talk more about how this thing works. So once your para box is done with its first cycle, you'll get a notification that looks a little bit like this. You have generated another prestige point. The para box now requires 20 million power. Um, you can see right here that I have generated like 6 million over the 10 million that we just made. Um, so if I let this run, we might be able to get up to the target 20 million. I don't know. The best thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and stop the loop after, but, but right now we're going to do a few things first, but we can go ahead and stop the loop at any point now. Um, but first let's go ahead and do a few things that are pretty destructive and show you what I'm talking about. We don't need to worry about power anymore. So I can go ahead and break these, put them in my inventory, right? I can go ahead and take these transfer nodes, pick those up, all of these so we can duplicate those as well. So they're, just, they're not that they're pretty expensive to make. Um, we can open this up. We have all these extra inventories. I'm going to go ahead and throw the GPS markers in here because I don't need extras of those, per se. Um, what else is very, like, costs a lot to make? I don't know. These cables, maybe? It does seem like these cables are stuff that we always really need a lot of. You can pretty much destroy anything in your world at this point. It doesn't really matter. You can, you can destroy whatever you want. As long as it's in your inventory, it will duplicate. And that is the awesome part about this, at least I think. Some people may or may not like this. Um, I've heard different people talking. So I pulled these actually out of my inventory system and I'm keeping them in my inventory. Um, let's see. I know we have these cables. Other than that, I'm not too worried about it. Um, over here, what else do we have that we can take? Um, I can probably take the, oh, this is a good example. We can take this tritanium out of here, and when we come back, we'll notice that that is back. Um, technically, I could break all of these filing cabinets and take them with me, and it would duplicate everything in the filing cabinets. I could take this compact chest, technically, and wrap it up, and I could take it with me. Um, we could take these guys with us. I don't need this extra cobble. I don't really need any of that stuff or that. If I wanted to duplicate these machines, I would just pick them up, take them with me. Very simple. We could do that as well. Uh, I think that's about it. I think that's all I really want to take with me is the stuff that's already in my inventory. 
The good part about this is the upgrades are actually in them, so whenever we hit this button, we will maintain everything that's in our inventory, but everything will be generated back to the state it originally was in the overworld. So let's go ahead and hit that stop loop, and I'll show you everything that happens. So we'll hit that stop loop. You'll see it's shutting down the world for us. Um, and a pair of box has reset the world to a previous state. So we can go back to the server list. We can start this back up. And when we start back up our world, it's going to take us a couple seconds. But I, I do want to show how to use this pair of box. Um, it's it's going to work wonders. Um, <laughs> and I, I mean, it's it's absolutely insane. Uh, the duplication stuff that you can do. But, like I said, according to Dark Osto, that's how it's intended. So, and Dark Fan. So, here we go. Everything that we had in our inventory is still in our inventory, and everything is back to the way it was previously. And all we have to do now is start over again, repeat that, repeat and rinse that process, and we now have another prestige point generated up here from that. And... Since we know that our current power setup will generate another prestige point for us, all we got to do is hit activate. It's going to do another backup for us. Right here, this world has been put into a time loop. All progress will be saved. And we know now, because our, our power is still back to where it was originally, we should know that if we repeat this loop again, everything should work. And also, we do need to fix this because, remember, that little thing broke before. This little thing was in the wrong wrong spot, so we need to put it over here. And there we go. And that should even make it go even faster. Look at that. Look how fast that's generating. This might even be enough to get us our second prestige point. But, like I said, you can rinse and repeat and do the same process over again. We can break our generators again, making even more lava generators for us. Ah, it's wonderful. Um, so at this point, making prestige points are super simple, as long as you get a pair of box. Guys... <laughs> I hope this was a very informative video. I hope you learned a lot. I'm going to go ahead and farm up a couple more prestige points. Of course, we're going to finish some more pages. This is our main world, but I do want to touch on some other worlds as well. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also give this video, guys, a huge thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching. Oh, 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 oh,